And the next speaker, Antonio Teixeira, is the president of EDEN, European Distance and E-Learning Network, and a director of at International Board of Standards for Training. His topic today is how openness and collaboration and redesigning the global education landscape, the critical role of professional networks. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much. Um, good morning. Uh, well, special good morning to you, but a special good morning as well to the colleagues uh, who are following us in the US. This is the first time that we actually are collaborating Eden and USTLA through the help of the Pitacus Magnus University, and I hope that this will be a successful uh, collaboration in the future uh, as well. So uh, I'd like also to start by a, um, a word of thank you to the Pitacus Magnus University for the initiative, also for the invitation, and uh, thank you uh, for this uh, well, second, well, another opportunity to visit Konos and Lithuania. Well, as you can see, I've selected a picture uh, that relates to Konos, and uh, I hope that the basketball metaphor looks uh, good for you and also for our colleagues in the U.S. Um, as, as, well, I thought it may represent a little bit uh, the challenges of uh, openness and collaboration, especially this, uh, this photo in particular. Well, um, since I'm a little bit um, limited by time, I'll go through to the, to the topic. Well, this is actually probably um, these, uh, these days the most pressuring uh, issue that we've been discussing in Europe, the refugee crisis, uh, the migration um, um, uh, phenomenon as well. This is not new to Europe, as you know. This is not new to the world as well. Um, what is important at this stage, and I would like to, um, uh, to point out, to highlight in, in particular, is how it, in, that is something new in a sense. It's uh, our realization of how interdependent the world has become and how we are all interdependent from, it, from each other. So how something that is happening so far away can actually, in a very short period of time, uh, actually affect our way of life, our own uh, problems. A second thing as well, which I think it's a good uh, conclusion from this, um, from this crisis, this ongoing crisis, is how much we depend on collaboration to actually meet these challenges. Uh, we alone, we cannot, um, we cannot solve them, and so we have to work together in order to find a positive way out. And this connects well also with the new goals for the millennium set by the UNESCO regarding, um, uh, well, also education. How can we better understand the complexity of the world around us? How are the problems of our world interconnected? <clears throat> And what does that imply for the solution? And actually, this is the message from uh, uh, UNESCO, the new vision of education for sustainable development places education at the heart of the quest to solve the problem, threatening our future. And that comes at an important conclusion. Education in all its forms and all levels, as it was mentioned by um, uh, Mr. David Crowley, is seen not only as an end in itself, but also as a one of the most powerful instruments for bring, bring, bringing about the changes required to achieve sustainable development. This is the, the goal that we are basically meeting uh, in the world today, and with which the European Commission is also um, um, aligned with. And so, if you look at this, we can more or less uh, conclude at this stage that we are face, facing now um, the, well, uh, the need to find new solutions for the societal challenges that we're uh, basically um, meeting. And this implies, first of all, to apply an holistic approach, so the understanding that everything is connected, interconnected, and we cannot uh, uh, just um, find a solution that is not um, interconnected with the different aspects of the problem involved. We have to focus on widening participation and outreach, in terms of education, of course, focus on cultural transformation, design more scalable formats, provide more personalized service, so scalability and personalization are, uh, uh, it's possible to meet them and should be met together. Be more rapid in implementing change, manage to reduce, manage to reduce costs, this was already mentioned in, my, in the previous speech as well, and manage to continuously improve quality. Of course, this uh, is, is also to be um, um, think about uh, in connection with the importance of technologies these days, as you can easily find this, uh, this um, uh, picture represents the evolution of uh, Facebook use in, uh, in the world, and uh, you, can, you can easily see how in just three years it's spreading all, all over the world. 
and how this is important. Uh, and this communication, this can, it represents interconnection and collaboration as well. And this is shown here. This is the uh, famous map that probably most of you um, uh, know about. This was developed by um, Olivier, uh, Olivier Bouchard um, uh, and represents the scientific collaborations from 2005 to 2009 based on the papers that have been uh, published. Well, the most interesting thing, of course, this would be not so different from the, the Facebook on 2010 that we've seen before. And similarly to the, that evolution, this is the new representation. So this is how uh, the same scientific collaborations evolved to the period 2008-2012. So this is becoming, uh, collaboration is becoming mainstream across uh, research, uh, in research across the world, as you can see. This also reflects in education. And this is, uh, well, it, it is quite uh, um, known, uh, um, the European uh, Pioneer uh, Initiative uh, for, uh, by the European Commission of developing the opening up um, strategy. And one of those results was the push on European provision of uh, online courses, in particular, open online courses or massive open online courses MOOCs. This is the current distribution of uh, MOOC provision in Europe. And what's, it, what's it interesting is that um, Europe not only is a provider of open uh, uh, opportunities for all, and these courses also represent not just a collaboration in terms of their production, but mainly a collaboration in terms of participation, because they're actually involving participants from all over Europe and all over the world. This uh, represents all the, uh, Europe, in, uh, uh, although catching up in terms of, of the provision, catching up to the uh, United States, Europe has always been the region which more which had acted, uh, which accounted for more uh, participants uh, in, in, in MOOCs worldwide. So there's always a, a quite an interest, interest uh, in Europe in um, uh, participating in these kind of experiences. More important than this is this um, inf uh, graphic as well. This shows uh, how many institutions declare, these higher education institutions declare themselves now as open education prov providers. If we had this kind of representation some 10 or 15 years ago, these would be just 15 or 20 institutions in Europe. Nowadays, you can see hundreds of them already uh, um, identifying themselves as op mainly open education uh, institutions, not just providers of open education, but considering themselves as open education institutions. So uh, the higher education sector and, well, the education sector, uh, the, the several education sectors in Europe are changing a lot. And this is also a, a good example. I also found some local example. I hope that you, well, I know that you can relate to one of the participants here. Uh, this is a, a good example of what is virtual mobility. This does not represent what is virtual mobility. It's just a, a, in the overall phenomenon. It's just a, a one part of it. But this, what it represents in particular is this uh, drive to collaboration, this drive to actually involvement of institutions that have a, um, a, a tradition in, in higher education that doesn't connect necessarily with technology, but they have been um, realizing the importance of this, uh, uh, this new phenomenon and have started to make use of it uh, in a positive way. Virtual mobility is one expression of uh, the potential of using technology in higher education because it, it allows for a very wide participation in uh, exchange programs and so the widening outreach of the poss possibility to actually engage in cultural enrichment um, experiences, multicultural enrichment, enrichment experiences. But um, another example as well is, of course, MOOCs, as I've just uh, presented before. And what can uh, um, be uh, derived from this experience is the fact that our higher education sector is changing. And as many uh, institutions, well, all of institutions start to become open education providers, providers of online learning, what is important is that the, the uh, higher education sector, in terms of business education and online learning and open education, is no longer just uh, an, um, a, a field of a few, actors, but is the field of all the actors. And this, this represents a challenge for the field itself, an adaptation in which the role of the expert, the traditional role of the expert, has also to uh, be rethinked in a way, because everyone now is, a, is an actor in this field, and so not only the ones that have 
developed throughout the years, experience and research. This is, represents, uh, this slide was, uh, represents a, a famous uh, picture designed by Stephen Downs, uh, trying to explain how connectivity works, um, uh, uh, connectivism works, um, and in, in that sense it also can be applied to what we are trying now with this use of uh, collaboration and openness in uh, a networking environment. Instead of just uh, having a direct dissemination, we can have actually the, the creation of networks of knowledge uh, that re reproduce uh, in a very wide scale the, the knowledge and experience, but also build knowledge in a scale that cannot be achieved by a traditional method. But of course, this, get back to the slide, this depends on the, uh, this um, combination of networking, transparency, and scalability. But also, importantly, is a shift that we have to, to make in order to go from content-centered processes or the, um, the idea of education as a content-centered process to a context-centered process. So, more importantly, of, uh, the, uh, of the content, we have to think about the context of the learning process and how all the factors that in, uh, are involved in, 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 and build uh, that context. This relates to all the, the things that we've been discussing uh, since the, the start. This shift is quite important, and in this sense, we can now say, uh, conclude, in a sense, that the open learning in this sense today is more than just um, um, well uh, widening the access to uh, good quality content, is on understanding the learning process as a contextual one, which can be built and continuously rebuilt in a shared, inclusive, and sustainable way that is proposed in that slide. So, getting back to the, the idea of the changing of the field, why do we need collaboration today and cooperation in our field as well? Because it, the, the landscape is rapidly changing, and so the new players are coming in, the new complex challenges for the field are uh, also uh, arising. Because we need articulated efforts to assure continuity of this common legacy of experience and research that has been accumulated in Europe, but also around the world. Because we have to globalize research and practice, of course, uh, in the sense that we uh, discussed previously. Because of the scalability of the practice, and the wider impact of new forms of delivery, and also the need for new regulatory frameworks, especially the ones that really, uh, of course, deal with quality evaluation. Um, how can these be met? Um, actually, well, the slide, the, the letters are a little bit larger than it was expected, but anyway, these things happen as well. This is the adaptability to context, so we have to cope with it as well. We see ourselves, and this is uh, uh, just a, a final word about uh, what is the goal of Eden, exactly as a professional organization that understands this changing uh, um, scenario and adjust, is adjusted and is adjusting to their, those new needs. So we see ourselves, first of all, as a large network of, institution, of institutions, actually we're the largest one in Europe with over 201 uh, institutions, but we also see ourselves as a, a network of academics, we also, and so of researchers, but also see ourselves as a network of practitioners, so of the teachers and the, and, um, the designers that actually are uh, producing courses and education provision, but we also see ourselves as a crossroad of ideas and experiences and the caretakers of a legacy. This is not seen here, but that's what uh, is written there. And so how do we... Do we see uh, the role of a professional network these days, as Eden can play that role, exactly uh, by achieving these uh, goals? To promote innovation, to support the development of innovation, well, promote by influencing the adoption of policies, legislations, and regulation, uh, to support the development of innovation by facilitating access to information and data, and by allowing the sharing of those resources and costs, recog recognizing and validating innovation as well, by speeding up the uh, validation uh, of, uh, of, and, of course, the establishment of standards, the validation of research and, uh, and uh, for innovation and the uh, um, establishment of the standards, assuring uh, the sustainability of the innovation process by enlarging these large-scale sharing experiences, uh, 
and by implementing the duration of innovation by preserving the legacy of the shared knowledge and experience. These are the key initiatives. I know that I'm just finishing my time. Uh, these are the key initiatives that we uh, even uh, that even develops. You can find much more information uh, at our portal. Of course, uh, we know uh, we develop uh, a lot of uh, activities and important activities in all of these fields. So, policy, research, quality, and dissemination, the conferences, uh, the journal, uh, of course, recognition um, schemes, and uh, the net networking area that um, is shared by our members. So today, a professional association has to be much more than just an association. It has to be a network of individual and, and, and institutions that collaborate and actually build together a community. And I hope this is uh, something that you'll find also attractive and that you could also find yourselves inclined to join us in the near future. Thank you very much. <laughs>